long. Go ahead and go to Exodus chapter 20 this morning. Going to continue with the Ten Commandments. Uh, I've only got three left counting this one. We are at number 8 in Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Very simply, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Very straightforward commandment. And, you know, understanding what stealing is, it's not real complicated. All right? It's not, you know, if it's not yours, don't take it. All right. I noticed, Jason, you're wearing my tie right now. All right. This message is for you. Okay. You know, thou, <laughs> thou shalt not steal. If it's not yours, don't take it. I guess family we share. But anyway, I, I, I noticed that when he was sitting there. He was wearing my tie this morning. But the, this eighth commandment, though, it's something. This is another one. All of us have one way or another. We've broken this commandment, too. Okay. I mean, so far, I think we're, you know, we're eight for eight and commandments broken one way or the other. We have transgressed all these commandments and, you know, the commandment, uh, you know, it's, it's it's straightforward. It's very clear. And some people might think, well, I've never been busted, you know, for stealing anything. Therefore I'm not a thief, but you know what? You're a thief, whether you get caught or not. If you steal, if you take something that's not yours, you are a thief. And it is. It's a very serious commandment. And so I'm sure we all have a pretty good understanding of what stealing is. You know, there are some things that the Bible teaches are stealing that I don't know if we always realize is stealing. I think there's a lot of times we steal without even realizing it. And so before we cover those things that I think are very clear that many times we are guilty of in our life, let's look at what the Bible teaches on how to deal with thieves. All right, and so look at Exodus chapter 21 and verse 16. It says, And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Okay, what does it mean to steal a man? Today we call that kidnapping. Okay, if somebody kidnaps someone, they should be put to death. Okay, they did, you know, a lot of, a lot of, there's, you know, in the Bible, there's a lot of things they put people to death for. And you know what? It solved the problem. You know, it, it took care of it. You know, you never had second offenders in these things if they got caught because they would, they would put them to death. Kidnapping is a very serious thing. I can't imagine somebody taking one of my kids and not knowing where they are, what they're doing. I mean, that is a horrible thing. And I, I'm telling you, our, our government should be punishing that in the most extreme way possible. These people should never uh, walk the streets again. And it's, it's, it's foolish to put people in prison for the rest of their life. That's, I think that's cruel and unusual punishment. You know, the Bible prescribed the death penalty. You don't see prisons in the Bible. And, uh, in fact, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple things, too, that I hope will help you understand some things in the Bible, too, that cause people to scratch their heads sometime. And so I hope you, you know, pay attention to this message. I'm going to say something a little bit later that at first will seem very offensive, all right? But you're going to find out if you, if you hear me out, it's not offensive at all. But uh, look at Exodus chapter 22. Verse 1, it says, If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Okay, so right there, you take somebody's ox, you got to give them five back. If you steal one of their sheep, you've got to give them four back. That, that's what they did back then. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die... There shall no blood be shed for him. We talked about this the other day. You know, if, if somebody breaks into your house to steal, okay, we see in the Bible that stealing is itself, it's not worthy of the death penalty unless you're stealing a person, then you should die. But if somebody breaks into your house, maybe they're just wanting to steal your TV. Does somebody deserve to die because they stole a TV? Obviously not. They should just have to give you back five TVs, okay? But at the same time, all right, you don't know that that's why they're going to come into your house, do you? So if you are practicing your Second Amendment rights, bearing arms, and you go and you shoot that person, you shouldn't get in any trouble, you know, because you have a right to protect yourself. And back in the Bible days, you know, it says if somebody's breaking up and you do and you smite them and they die, no blood's going to be shed for that person. You were, you were trying to protect your family. You didn't know what that guy was going to do. But then look at verse 3. If the sun be risen upon him, okay, let's say he succeeds. He gets your TV. He gets away. And, and the, um, there shall be, um, if the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him. For he should make, or there, sh uh, upon him, there should be blood shed for him. For he should make full restitution if he have nothing. Then he shall be sold for his theft. Y'all see that? 
sold for his theft. Okay, if you catch him, you're not going to kill him because he needs to make restitution. Okay? He needs to pay you back. And if he can't pay you back, what if they can't pay you back? Then you will sell him. Whoa, selling people? All right, verse 4. If the theft certainly be found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. Okay, so right here, I want to show you something here. All right, please hear me out. All right, I'm going to say something offensive. Okay, but we, you know, remember, we've been programmed, we've been brainwashed. But you know what? Our country would be better off if we practiced some slavery. All right, now, anybody getting offended by I? I you know, that, that, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Okay, but look what it said here in the Bible. It says if he if he steals, you know, if he's not able to make restitution, he needs you can sell him. Oh, folks, that isn't that terrible? You know, I mean, oh man, you know, you can't sell people. You know what's what's wrong? You know that that's one of the things that's wrong with the Bible. You know, it talks about slavery and selling people. That's just cruel. That's just wicked. Let me tell you, what we do in this country is so much worse than slavery. You say, no, that, that, you know, you have no right to ever sell anybody. No man should ever own a man. Okay. And you know, I don't, I don't like slavery, but here's the thing. If we would practice this, it would save the taxpayers billions of dollars. Cause what do we do today? If somebody goes and they steal your car and they wreck it. All right. Let's say you got a $10,000 car and they steal it and they wreck it. Okay. Hopefully your insurance will take care of you, but usually it doesn't get fully taken care of, does it? Usually you are out. You're going to be out. You're going to get shortchanged. And then you know what they're going to do? They're going to take that guy. They're going to take him away from his family, away from his job so he can provide for his family. And they're going to throw him in prison for however many years where he can't get out, where he can't be with his family, where he can't provide for his family. Wouldn't it make more sense? To have that man pay you back double, triple, whatever, and then he can still go home at nights and be with his family. He could still provide for his family, but you know, he now owes you all this money. Wouldn't that be a whole lot better? If it's me, if I'm, a, if I steal something, I would rather be somebody's slave than go to prison. So no man should own a man, but it's okay for the government to own these people. And then the government owns them. And then what do we do? That means we have to pay for them. Our tax dollars pay to keep these guys locked up, to take care of their health care, you know, to take, you know, pay for their gender changes if they decide they want one in prison. And, you know, none of us in here, we, none of us get offended by prison. We don't think that's terrible. We don't think that's cruel. But, you know, how dare they have slavery in the Bible? It's way better than prison. I would. I would rather have to go work for you for you know, maybe three or four hours a day every day after I get off my other job to pay you back than to go live in prison and not be able to see my family. Do you all see how our thinking is just messed up in this country? And you know what? We do, and we all think, oh yeah, it's terrible. We would never do anything. You know, slavery is so bad, so bad, but we think prison is fine. I'm telling you, it's messed up. And who are most of these people in prison? Mur murderers and stuff. The Bible says they're supposed to be put to death. That's cheap. Okay, you know, taking care of these people for the rest of their life, very expensive. Thieves, that's expensive too. Taking care of these people for however many years, they should be paying people back. Listen, if we had a practice like that, where you, if you stole and you got busted, you were paying back fourfold or whatever, man, I'd be leaving my house unlocked all the time. I'd be wanting somebody to steal my stuff so I could find them and then they're going to owe me a lot of money. Steal my van. I wouldn't mind getting four back. You know, I'll go sell the other other ones and take a vacation or something. I mean, and, and I could help stimulate the economy that way. I'm telling you, this is good stuff. You know, maybe I need to run for governor. You know, or you know, I'm, I'm you know, run for president. You know, like you know, this will make the country great. You know, this will help us bigly if we do. You know, if we if we do, you know, just uh, you know, I, we, we, that's what we need to do. But now. Well, listen, our, our country is it's so messed up. It's so stupid. We're so politically correct about everything. And we do. We get offended by the thought of slavery, which it is. It's, it's ugly. I wouldn't like being a slave, but it's a whole lot better than prison. And you know what? If you don't like, want to be a slave, don't steal. Thou shalt not steal. You should not take what does not belong to you, what you did not work for, what is not yours. You have no right to do that. And this, this practice, I think it would stop a lot of theft and it would save the taxpayers billions of dollars. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. 
It says in verse 30, it says, Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. And he shall give all the substance of his house. You see that right there? It's saying right there, you know, man, if you know, don't despise and don't hate them. Listen, sometimes people they get desperate, they get hungry, and you know, we're not going to hate that person. We're not going to put that person to death. We're not going to take them out and hang them. But they do need to restore sevenfold. It says right there, even if they have to give all the substance of their house. Everything they own is now yours because he stole from you. You say that's cruel. What do you think is going to happen to everything he owns if he gets thrown into prison? What would happen, to, what would happen in your families today if the, if the men of the house were thrown into prison? Now they have, there's, you just lost all that income, didn't you? The family now is all going to have to go on welfare, costing taxpayers even more money. Do you all see how ridiculous our, our government is, our society is? You know, I hope you all are getting mad. You all should get mad about this stuff, all right? Somebody look mad or something, all right? We ought to be getting frustrated with this stuff. You know, we've all been hammered with patriotism so much. We're the greatest country on earth. We're the greatest country on earth. You know, we do, and we just let our government do all this foolish stupidity that's totally against the word of God, and it doesn't even bother us. Yeah, you know, throw that thief in prison. No, don't throw him. Listen. We're not cruel. We're not animals. Okay. We're not going to lock, we're not going to lock people up for years because they stole. They should just have to work for me and pay me back. Whether it be he comes over to my house and does what I ever ask him to do, uh, you know, take care of my yard, whatever, or we, uh, they automatically deduct money from his paycheck and give it to me. Oh, that's terrible. We do that all the time with alimony. And child support, don't we? You know what? You go and you quit paying your bills, and you know you run up the, you run up these credit cards and things. They're going to do all that to you, aren't you? Pretty much their slave anyway. Listen, well, we already have slavery in this country, and, and it is. It's we already have it, and we've got to get our mindset right on this. And people do. Sadly, a lot of Christians they get scared. They see this stuff about slavery in the Bible. Oh, you know, you know, don't look at that passage of the Bible. No, let's look at that passage in the Bible. Our country would be better off if we practiced slavery instead of throwing everybody in prison. It, it makes no sense at all. And listen, there's some, people, some of you in here, you know, I might think you're mean. I don't want to be your slave. Well, as long as I don't steal from you, I don't have to worry about it. And I don't think if you have slaves, you ought to be allowed to beat them and all that kind of stuff. You know, let them go home at night to their families. But they owe you because they stole. Nobody made them do it. And we do. We just... we. Are, we're so messed up in this country, we think slavery is cruel and prison's fine. I think prison is, is very cruel. And, and so if, I think if, if you do something really, really bad, rope's cheap. You know, you find, get a good rope and a big tree branch somewhere, you know, or you know, bullets are cheap, that kind of stuff. If they do something that's really, really bad, you know, that's what the, that's what the Bible teaches. And so... Uh, you know, sla- but yeah, slavery would it'd stop a lot of theft and save the taxpayers billions. It'd be great for the economy. And, you know, you, it, you do, you think that's terrible, but I think prison is, I do. I think it's a cruel thing is that you, you know, you say no man should own a man, but once again, what is it when you're putting him in prison? You know, we do all the, think about it. All those people that are in prison today, we own them, don't we? Yeah, we're, we're the government. You know, it's our taxpayers that's funding it. We're paying for everything. And they are. And you know what? They're not accomplishing anything for me. I would rather, if I'm going to own them, I would rather them be out here and so they can come mow my yard and do some yard work for me and the things, you know, wax my car. Uh, You know, there's a lot of things I don't want to do that I could have them do for me if they owe me a lot of money. And so I do. I I think think this country would be better off if I am the thief I would like that better too. And I would, you know, if you do, you, when you take a man who steals away from his family, you're punishing the wife, you're punishing the children. You are, you're punishing so many people. And that's not fair. That's not right. But that person did steal. They do need to pay for their crime, but they do not pay. They should not pay with years behind bars somewhere. They should pay with work, with money. That would be the thing to do. And yes, yeah, slavery is a nasty word. But you know what? 
you know, theft's a nasty crime. It, it, it's, it's a wicked thing. We shouldn't do it. So, uh, you know, ways that we steal, though, all right? So we all know, we all know stealing's wrong. We all know you shouldn't take things that don't belong to you. But there's ways that we steal without realizing we're stealing. Turn over to Genesis chapter 31. Genesis chapter 31. I want to show you a few things in here. We all might not be as innocent as we think. The Bible says in verse 19, And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. Then jump down to verse 26. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done? Thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword. Jacob in this story, he, he, he stole away is the term that's used. What does that mean to steal away? Well, it, you know, it means, you know, he, it's like he, he snuck away. But the reason it was called stealing away in there, Laban counted on Jacob. Jacob worked for Laban. Okay, Jacob was responsible for a lot of what Laban owned. And Laban, he was very dependent on Jacob. And Jacob, because he was being sneaky, because he was being deceptive, instead of telling Laban, hey, you know what? I'm going to go back to the land of my fathers. I'm going to take my wife, I'm going to, wives. I'm going to take my children. I'm going to take my animals. And I'm going to leave. Instead of telling him and preparing him, what does he do? He just sneaks away. And Laban doesn't find out until a few days later. Now what's Laban going to do? Here, there's this big, you know, gap that needs to be filled. You know, he what? You know, he he was dependent on Jacob. God had blessed Laban because of Jacob, and Jacob because he was a coward. He stole away in the night, and that hurt Laban. Laban was dependent on him, and when and there are uh, when we steal away, we, many times we steal when we are stealing away from places that depend on us. Listen, if you have a job. There's somebody that's depending on you out there. Your employer depends on you. Your employer expects you to show up. Your employer is expecting you to be there for the next, you know, however much time. And when you just quit, these people who just walk off the job, well, now the employer's got to figure out what to do. You know, I, they got to prepare for this. And obviously, you know, you're not entitled to work at a job forever, but you know what? You ought to give them notice. Most companies require two weeks notice. If that's what they require, give them two weeks notice. If they want more than that, give them more than that. Let them know what you're going to do. If these people are depending on you, if they're counting on you, let them know what you're going to do. Don't just sneak off. Don't just walk away because you're afraid to face them. Listen, in churches, people do that too. Listen, if you're, if you're, in, if you're in this church and if you're serving in this church, you know, we count on you. We, you know, we do we expect things from you. We expect you to be faithful. We expect your attendance. We expect you to participate in the giving. We're counting on those things. And as we make plans and as we uh, try to do different things, you know, we count on you. And you know what? If you decide that, you know what? I'm done with this church. I've had enough. You ought to have enough decency to come and face me and say, listen, you know what? I, I'd rather not be here anymore. Uh, I, I want to go somewhere else, whatever. You know, let me know. Prepare me. Don't just disappear. And then I have to explain to everybody in the church, hey, we're so-and-so. I have no idea. Hey, you know, they were in charge. You know, they helped in this ministry. You know, what are we going to do? I have no idea. I didn't know they were going to go. People do that all the time in churches. They just all of a sudden disappear. People were counting on them. People were depending on them. Maybe ministries got started because that person was going to be involved. And they, you know, the pastor thought, you know, I can count on this. It would be great. And then they go and they just steal away. And then now, what are we going to do? Left, you know, left holding the bag. You're dependent on them. And listen, folks, that's wrong. You should never do that. You shouldn't just, you know, up and leave, steal away. And when, do, when people do that, when they leave their jobs, when they leave their churches, or even just fail to fulfill your commitments, when you do that, you know, you're stealing. You got to let people know. You got to prepare them. They are counting on you. You've told them you are going to do something. Okay? And they made plans according to that. And when you back out, now they have to figure out what to do. Now they ha it's going to take away from something else that they had to do. You stole in that situation. And so you need to understand that, you know, whatever you're involved in, people do. People count on you. People, ex they expect something from you. They need you. And you don't, you, you should never just go and disappear like that.
If you're in, if you're in the right, you know, just let people know. If you're if you're mad at your boss at work or whatever, don't just quit showing up for work. You go face him. Tell him. Say, listen, I'm done. I'm going to put in my notice. I'll, I'll put up with this for two more weeks, and then I'm out of here. Let him know. Don't just steal away. That's a very wicked thing to do. That's a very bad testimony. And I think Laban too. You know, Laban didn't stop Jacob once he found him. He didn't tell him, you can't go. He didn't fight him. He didn't physically try to stop him. But you know what? He, he went after him because you know what? He wanted Jacob to face him. Hey, what's going on? You know, you, 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 you stole away. You took off. You took everything. You took my family. You didn't let me tell my daughters goodbye. You didn't let me tell my grandkids goodbye. That was a very wicked thing for Jacob to do. It was a very deceptive thing to do. Jacob was very, he was a very deceitful person. So when, yeah, when you're not able to face someone who counts on you, it's usually because you know you're in the wrong. Listen, people who steal, when do they usually steal? They steal in the night. They steal when no one's looking. They try to do it when nobody can see what they're doing. And turn over to 2 Samuel chapter 19. 2 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 1. It says, And it was told Joab, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom, and the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son, and the people gat them by stealth that day into the city, as people being ashamed steal away when they flee into battle. Now see that? These guys, you know, as people that be ashamed steal away when they flee into battle. Listen, if you're a soldier... Okay, your commanders are counting on you to be out there in the battle. Your fellow soldiers are they're depending on you. Many times their battle plan that they have, you know, they're figuring, you know, there's gonna be this many people, this person's gonna do this, that person's gonna do that. They are planning on you, they are counting on you, and when you as a soldier, you just steal away, you run away, you know what? It could cost the lives of other people. And you did, you hurt those people in a great way because you stole away. And people that do that, they do that because they're ashamed. And that's why people leave churches without saying anything. You know, without facing... That's why people, many times, they quit their jobs. Many times they're embarrassed. They got in trouble. They got written up for something. You know, their boss yelled at them and humiliated them. And they, they know they were in the wrong. They know they were embarrassed. And so what do they do? Just disappear. That's not how we're supposed to do things. Listen, if you're in the right and they're in the wrong, have the guts to go face them and say, listen... I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to give you my two weeks notice. I'll work for the next two weeks, but then uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to move on. I'm going to go elsewhere. If you're in the right, you've got nothing to hide. But when you're ashamed, you steal away. And I believe, I believe that's stealing. But you know, we also steal when we fail to give something of ours that someone else is entitled to. Okay? Uh, and I don't, I don't want to re-preach this, but a few weeks ago, I was talking... I, preached on giving. I talked about the tithes and offerings and in Malachi chapter three, verses eight to 10, it says, you know, ye have uh, robbed God. They're like, where in have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings. And a lot of people today, they're like, no, it's not robbing God. We don't do tithes like they did in the old Testament. Listen, we don't take tithes today. We don't forcibly take them from anybody. However, I explained in that message how if you are receiving service, okay, from people, if you're being ministered to in the word, okay? if you, you know if you're be, if you're getting the benefits of being a church member, if I'm ministering to you, I have right to your carnal things. I'm not going to re-preach that message. Go back and listen to that one. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Uh, why should I give? Go back and listen to that message. But you know when I preached that, we had a police officer here that was that day in the service, and after the service, he told me that what they call that when you uh, do not pay for services. It's called theft of service. It's, it's stealing. Okay? And listen, as a church, we don't forcibly take tithes from people. But as the Bible says, they that preach the gospel are supposed to live of the gospel. I'm supposed to get my living from the gospel. Okay, but we don't send bills to people when we provide service to, for them, do we? Paul said, you know, I'm not going to exercise that power over you. Every other job in the world does that. Your doctors, your mechanics, they all do that. We don't do that here. We will never send you a bill. So then, how am I supposed to get compensated? Well, from 
the church, but the church doesn't send bills, right? So you're supposed to give, you know, not grudgingly or of necessity. You're supposed to give those free will offerings and that's between you and God. And listen, either way, God's going to take care of me. But if you don't give through here, God's going to have to help me somewhere else. God owns everything. Okay. God owns Walmart. He's going to have to take care of me through that. And you know what you did? You stole from God because now God was supposed to be paying me through here, but now he's got to do it from somewhere else. And so you're not robbing me, you're robbing God. And that is, that's even in our laws today, that's theft of service. If, if I'm a plumber and I come over to your house and I fix your kitchen sink or whatever, and you don't pay me, you stole from me. You didn't sneak into my house and take something but you are not giving me something I am entitled to. Therefore, you are a thief. According, according to the law and according to the Bible, that is a thief. And I believe that's what it means when we rob God with our tithes and offerings. You know, God, He's supposed to get the first part of everything. In Joshua chapter 7 and verse 10, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned. And they also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and assembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. That's the story of Achan, that first city that they took over after, after Jericho. God told them all the spoils of that city are mine. That first city that they went after, God said, everything that you get from that, it is mine. God gets the first part of everything. God's supposed to get the first tenth. I haven't counted up. I've been told before they went after nine other cities after that and took spoils and all of that was theirs. I don't know. I'm repeating what I heard somebody preaching. All right. So you can take that for what it's worth. But listen, that first, the first, it was God's. Achan wanted some of it. He kept it among his own stuff. And you know what? It brought a curse to the people of Israel. And you are, you are cursed when you have something that does not belong to you, and especially what belongs to God. And you know what? You shouldn't have anything in your house that belongs to someone else, that someone else is entitled to. You know, I hope y'all are paying your bills. I hope y'all keep up with that stuff. I hope, you know, if, if you are, if somebody's providing you service and you are not giving them what you were supposed to give them. Listen, you didn't break into their house and take something, but you didn't give them. You didn't give something that belongs to them. You're a thief. You have, you have stolen. Do we throw prison people in prison for that in our country today? No. But that doesn't mean you're not a thief. Okay, just because uh, we don't you know deal with that stuff very good in this country, but it is that that is a theft, and so. You know, once again, we don't force anybody to give. Every other service in the world does that. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather, talking about that power, to take from you when they provide a service for you. Everybody has that power. Whether it be somebody, they come and they shampoo your carpet. They're going to send you a bill, aren't they? People, you know, people don't just do that for free. They are. They're expecting something from you. They're counting on you. A lot of things today, they make you pay up front. You know why? Because there's a lot of thieves out there. You know, you used to be able to just pump your gas, go in and pay for it. Now we've got to pay up front. Why? Because there's a lot of thieves. A lot of people who aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And you know what? We've got, you know, all of us today, we pay extra for everything because of thieves. You know, think about Walmart would be even cheaper if we didn't have to have security cameras, you know, security guards, all those things. But why do they have to do that? Because of thieves. You see, when you do, when you steal, you might think, oh, I'm stealing from this rich person. No, you're stealing from everybody. Because you are, you're making prices go up when you do that. You, when you steal from one, you do art, you're stealing from everybody. And you need to, and people do when they when they do that. That's very selfish, and it should it should be punished, and it should be in a harsh way. And so, you know, when you uh, another way we're kind of stealing too. When you have the power to take care of those you are benefiting from, you better do it. Look what it says in Proverbs three twenty seven, Proverbs chapter three, 
in verse 27, it said, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Listen, if you owe somebody something, and you do, and you have it, you have the power to give it to you, they are depending on that. You know, many times, you know, we got to be careful with this stuff, but has anybody before ever written a check that you didn't have the money in the bank yet? Okay, but you knew you were supposed to be getting paid the next day. And so you, you kind of took a chance. All right, well, what if your employer that day be like, you know what, we're going to wait an extra day. I know we agreed to this day, but you know, we're going to wait an extra day. You're hurt now, aren't you? And if you know that would that would make all of us pretty upset, wouldn't it? I used to work with a guy. You know, I used to work at a place that they regularly were late on our paychecks. And fortunately, I was single and I lived at home. I didn't really have a lot of bills. You know, if I if they were a few days late paying me, it didn't really hurt me. But my coworker, he was married and had kids, and he was always playing beat the bank and stuff. And he would he'd send checks out and stuff expecting to be getting paid before those things were going to get there and everything. And then regularly, oh yeah, guys, we're not going to be able to pay you today. And then he would get all these late fees, you know, or not late fees, uh, overdraft fees and stuff. And, and the place would always take care of it for him. But at the same time, it's like, you know, that, that's a terrible thing to do to somebody. When people are counting on you, when they are expecting something from you, you've made an agreement to, you know, give them, something that should be theirs, you better come through. They're dwelling securely by thee. They're expecting that from you. They're depending on you. Maybe they need food, and that's, that was their, that's their battle plan for going and buying groceries. This person owes me this money. They're going to be paying me on this day. I'll have the money then. you know, you got, you got to watch out for that kind of stuff. Those people many times, when you don't take care of them, they might cry out to God, and God's going to hear that, and you're going to be in big trouble. And so you do, you, you know, uh, so, um, you know, devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Very wicked thing. And you know, the thing is too, when it comes to, you know, I believe, well, um, notice what it says in verse, you know, it says when it's in the power of thine hand to do it. Okay. A lot of times, and we see a lot of this in our country, you know, there's people who pretend they can't do something. Okay. It says, you know, withhold not good to him who is doing is in the power of thine hand to do it. Okay, now there are some people out there that literally do not have the power to, you know, get a job to take care of their needs and they need help, don't they? And you know what we do? We give them help in this country. You know, we have welfare programs, but listen, if you're one of these people, you're saying, you know, I can't do what I'm obligated to do. I can't take care of my family. I can't pay my bills. And then people help you. And then you turn and you go and you're buying beer and lottery tickets and all these things. You know, you're a thief. And these people that you see in the grocery store that are all on welfare, not paying for their own groceries and then spending their cash to buy lottery tickets and cigarettes and beer. You know what? Those people are thieves. Okay, that's stealing. These people are saying, I can't take care of myself. I need help. And listen, if you can afford beer and cigarettes and lottery tickets, you got more money than I do. You're richer than I am. And these people are. They're saying, I can't do these things. And so other people are giving, sometimes involuntarily. And then these people, yeah, it's in the power. They could take care of themselves. They could get a job. They could do without their lottery tickets and their beer and things like that. But you know what? That is, that is stealing when you do that. And so, look at 2 Samuel chapter 15. Another way we steal, real quickly, I want to cover this one. In 2 Samuel chapter 15, let me turn over there in verse 1, we have the story of Absalom, the son of David, and he was a very wicked individual. But look what it says that he did in 2 Samuel chapter 15. Now remember, David is the king. All right? David is the king of Israel. But it says in verse 1, Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spake, saying, uh, Hold, we are the... Or no, that's chapter... I'm in chapter 5. It's chapter 15. I was like, that's not what I want. And it came to pass after this, that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him. 
Absalom's going around looking like a big shot. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so when any man had a controversy, came to the king for judgment. Then Absalom called unto him and said, Oh, what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, the matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said, Moreover, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took and kissed him. And on this matter did Absalom to all Israel and came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. You all see that right there? Absalom was not the king. David was the king. But Absalom, he's wanting to overthrow David. And so what does Absalom do? He's going behind the king's back. He's lying about the king. He's trying to make himself look like he'd be a better king. And he's stealing the hearts of the people so he can lead a rebellion. Folks, that is wicked right there. You know, that is wicked to steal hearts. Remember, stealing, it's taking something that's not yours. The hearts of these people did not belong to Absalom. They belonged to David. He was the king. He was the one that was in charge, the one who God had put over Israel. And we have no business, we have no right to try to make people loyal to us over people like their parents, for example. You know, you, you have some kid come over to your house, play with your kids, and yeah, my parents don't let me do this. Oh, man, too bad. If you were my kid, I would let you do those things. I do stuff like that to my nieces and nephews and stuff. You know, I, I, I give them sympathy and spoil them. But, uh, you know, at the same time, yeah, I guess I'm doing that. Anyway, that's wrong. <laughs> but their parents always straighten them out after that. You know, I think you're allowed to spoil family. But no, listen, I, I shouldn't try to steal their hearts and make them love me better than they love their parents. That would be wicked. Okay? If I succeed in what I've tried to do and I try very little, that would be wicked if, if I was successful in that. You know, I'm, I'm having fun with that. My dad, he's always done the same thing with my kids when they were little, you know, trying to give them sympathy you know, when they get in trouble. Uh, but uh, any, anyway, you know, it, it's, it's wrong to do that, to do it with parents, with somebody's spouse. Okay? People do that sometimes. Listen, if they're married to somebody else, they belong to them. You know, guys... Don't go sweet talking that woman and try to get her liking you over her husband. You know, don't try to get her. Maybe she's having a problem with her husband. Don't you go, you know, get being that shoulder for her to cry on so you can steal her heart. She belongs to somebody else and vice versa. That kind of thing is wicked. That is stealing. And you have no business doing that. We have no, you know, you have no right to do that on the job when it comes to the other workers. Listen, if you're not the manager... You're not the manager. You don't need to be going around, you know, if I was the manager. This is what I would do. And get people trying to follow your ways instead of the one who is actually in charge. You know what you're doing? You're stealing hearts. You have no business doing that. Listen, you might be right in what you think. You might be right in what you say. You know, that woman's husband, he might be a ding-dong. But you know what? You don't get to try to steal their heart. It doesn't belong to you. You can't have it. And don't, don't ever even try. You have no business doing that. We have no right to steal the hearts of someone's employees. You know, we have no right, you have no right to try to steal the hearts of people in the church, you know, from the pastor. You know, if I was the pastor of this church. Well, listen, if God wanted you to be the pastor of this church, he'd have had you start the church. If God really wants you to be a pastor, if you're that great, go start a church somewhere. And go get your own people, but don't come in here and try to tell everybody how you're better than me. Stealing hearts, listen, that happens in churches. And that's wicked when people do that. You have no business doing something like that. That, that is a wicked thing to do. And no pastor has a right to steal the hearts of the people from God. You know, I have no right to put pressure on you to follow what I teach you when it goes against what the Bible says. No, no business doing that at all. You know, we need to be, you know, be, all preachers should be a John the Baptist. He must increase, I must decrease. That's what we ought, we, we ought to do. And so, uh, that, that's stealing. And then Jeremiah 23, 29. Look at that one. This is an interesting one here. This I, A lot of you, you may have done this before. I hate when people do this. I try not to do it. 
But in Jeremiah 23, verse 29, it says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness, yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. You all see that? When we say that God said something that God did not say, we're stealing His words. You're worth saying, you know, the, you know, the Bible says this, and the Bible doesn't say that. And what we're, and the reason that's such a problem is when we say something, the Bible says something the Bible doesn't say, you know what we're doing? We're discrediting something else the Bible says. We're taking away from the words of God. We're taking away the effectiveness of that. And you know, right here we see God is against prophets that do that. When somebody gets them, like, you know, God told me this. God told me, everybody in here before they leave today, they need to write me a check for $20. God told me that and y'all better cough it up or y'all aren't going to make it home. You know, listen, if I tell you all that uh, and you know, and I'm serious, you know, God, listen, God doesn't work that way. I have no right to put words in God's mouth. You know, God told me, you know, God revealed to me whatever and just make up stuff. Folks, that is wicked. And you are, you're stealing God's words. And especially when what you're saying goes contrary to what his word says, you're stealing the words of God and God's against those people. And so when we misrepresent what God says, we end up discrediting what he actually said. We have no business doing that. When we add to or take away from God's word, we take away what God was trying to produce with those words. No business doing that. When we say things that God never said, we're taking away from his reputation, aren't we? And we're hurting his good name. And that's happening with a lot of people today. There's a lot of people that are down on God because some false prophet, he told them God said things that God never said. Listen, we have no right to do that. Don't do that to me. You know, don't go around, you know, Brother Tommy wants slavery back in America. Well, listen, if you say it like that, Everybody's going to think, I want us to go back to pre-Civil War time. You know, and then it's going to go out, Brother Tommy's a racist. I didn't say nothing about that. I'm just saying slavery is a lot nicer than prison. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what it did in the Bible. I'm not going to go try to get legislation passed to do that. You know, don't go out there, you know, adding things and, you know, and, you know, I had somebody do that to me the other day. You know, somebody said something and, you know, they... It, Sometimes words come out wrong, and they are. They're trying to use this person's words to make them look bad, trying to hurt their reputation. That is wrong. That's wicked. And people do that with God all the time. You know, look at what the Bible, you know, look at, you know, the Bible talked about slavery there, about selling a man. God's for slavery. You know, and, and once again, putting the wrong idea, misrepresenting. I see preachers do that all the time, and that is so nasty. When they do that, I, I hate I hate when that happens. But listen, when we do, the Bible says they're st they were stealing His words, and that's what we're doing when we do that. And so we need to remember, the stealing is it's more than just someone going somewhere and physically taking something. Most of us would be scared to do that. You know, it's it, it's not just taking an item. Our actions, our inactions, our words it can cause us to hurt others that deserve our help. And when someone does without because of our inaction, maybe you did nothing. You know, you should have done something. You said you were going to do something and you just did nothing. Okay, you did nothing. You didn't go anywhere. You didn't take anything. But the truth is you did steal from them. You hurt what they were trying to accomplish when they were depending on you. That is stealing. And you know what? Commandment number eight, thou shalt not steal. We better take this serious. And so with that, let's all stand together.